Lady, go! Pastor Joe here from Christian Outreach Ministries in our men's home Bible study. Amen. And see if we can work on some issues when dealing the subject of hell. Guys, give a little roar. Yeah. And we were discussing the uh, characteristics of hell and all that was taking place. And um, there, Jesus probably brings it up more times about hell and and uh, or Sheol, as the Bible speaks about it, and we use the example of the rich uh, man in Lazarus. And then we're going to go ahead and read a portion of Scripture. We talked just a little bit about this, but we'll we'll read it, uh, Luke chapter sixteen, and we'll read verses nineteen. Jeremy, would you go ahead and do the honors and uh, read uh, nineteen to twenty-three and or nineteen to twenty-four, and then we'll stop it. Okay. There was a certain rich man who was clothed in purple and fine linen, and fared sumptuously every day. But there was a certain beggar named Lazarus, full of sores, who was laid at his gate, desiring to be fed with the crumbs which fell from the rich man's table. Moreover, the dogs came and licked his sores. So it was that the beggar died, and was carried by the angels to Abraham's bosom. The rich man also died and was buried. And being in, in torment in Hades, he lifted up his eyes and saw Abraham afar off and Lazarus in his bosom. Then he cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me and send Lazarus that he may dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue, for I am tormented in this flame. All right, so here what we got is uh, you have a man that has pretty much everything. When you think of a rich man, what do we think of? Come on. Money. When you see, let me say, let me see, uh, what are those, the construction company right down the street? What are they called? Uh, Holloway. 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 Okay, you see Mr. Holloway. I don't know if there's an actual person there. Huh? What do we think of? Money. Nice. That guy's got, he pulls up in a nice big black truck, all equipment. Man, you think, wow, that guy's got the full cool dollars, right? They must live in a nice house, must have some things. Okay, so, so we identify, and, and can you imagine in the days of, of Jesus, poverty, like poverty right now, we're in poverty. Okay, you, okay in society, a person making 150000 is considered middle class. I could get that wrong, because that was back in the 90s, yes, so right. it's probably 250000 So let's say $250,000 annual a, a person makes. I couldn't have that wrong, okay? But let's just say it's 250000 It's considered middle class. Mm -hmm. Now, poor people, let's say, for, for instance, their money, yearly, annual salary would be 90000 So poverty has got to be way greater than that. So you think about how much money you, because people, you make, the way they calculate money is how much you money, money you make a, in a year, okay? So if you make, say, for instance, 20000 that may be a lot for some people. $20,000 in California is nothing. I used to make uh, anywhere from $35,000 to $40,000 before I came here a year. Okay? I think my best year was $42,000 okay, that I made in California. And I didn't do very much. Controller and did some supervising stuff. Okay, move up the ladder. But imagine, okay, how much, how, you know how much $42,000? Hourly or? Yeah, yeah, hourly. No, I mean, you break, come on, give me, break that down in 12 months. Yeah, $42,000, that'd be like what, $2,000 a month? $2,000 a month. Or $2,500. No, it was 36000 36? Thirty-six. So if you're making thirty-six dollars, thirty-six hundred a month, okay, you know you probably spend some buy buy a car, maybe buy a house or two. Who knows? Okay, but the houses in California are very expensive. All right. So uh, if you think about how much money you make in a month, break it down to week, and all this other stuff, how society sees us. 
All right. $42,000 here is a lot of money. Okay. But it's poverty in different places. So if you've seen in the days of Jesus that if we walk out and we see a man out there that has a sign and says, no, we're for food or I need to eat, and we consider that person to be homeless and poor. All right? <clears throat> Versus somebody who has it all together. Okay? And this is how it was in the days of Jesus. Okay? In the days of Jesus, it was either have or have not. If you couldn't work, you couldn't do nothing, well, the only thing was left for you to beg. All right? And so what's, what we find here is that we have a man who has everything. He has everything in his life. Okay, let's look at let's look at uh, Matthew chapter sixteen because having everything and everything to you right now is money because why I ain't got none <laughs> broke and is money gonna fix your problems though no does money change your hatred does money change your jealousy. Okay, or especially for those who have addicted personalities, does money change that? Okay, if you have a problem with drugs, it's going to intensify it more. Okay, uh, when you have issues in life, money doesn't fix those. You can't buy your children. We try to, but you can't. It's easier as a father. Okay, I remember I used to throw money at my my children all the time. All right? I was selling drugs, making money off drugs. I was doing drugs. Maybe not as a lot as I end up doing a lot at the end, but and I was using that money to support myself and pay off my kids so they wouldn't look. Okay? Just go over there. Here's some money. Go over there. Go over there. All right? Throwing money at them. And then when I got saved, started getting a job, I wanted to buy their love back. You know, so you, know, you think you can buy emotion, and you can't. You can't buy all of them. Money can't buy those things. Everything that money does for us is temporal. You can't buy your way into heaven. Okay? What can money do for you? In the physical, it can only get you what? Things that make you happy. You know, if you set your mind and say, well, if only I had this much, then I can do this and that. What will you settle for? Because many sell out their salvations for it. You sell out your time. Yes. So, uh, how do you keep your salvations with not, I, mean, I know we have to have all that stuff, but. No, you so don't. Look, you don't just look. Do we need to have? Do we need to have a fifty-inch TV? Do we need to have more than one TV? Do you need to have more than one car? You have kids, right? Right. You gotta ask yourself. Do you need to have? Okay. Well, on the emotional side, do you, does if money makes you if money makes you happy? Okay, and. When you get it, you're happy and you're in a good mood. You're in a good mood because you got paid today. Come on, you feel a little chipper about it. Wow, well, because I got paid. It comes out naturally. You tell everybody, oh, it's hey, it's the third. I'm loaded. Hey, but come down to the following week. How do you feel? Broke. Then all the emotions come back. Security. Yes. Here's what Jesus says in, in chapter 16, uh, verse, what was it? Verse 26 or 25. Okay, he says, Whoever desires to save his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. What does it profit a man to gain the whole world and to lose his own soul? All right? Well, here's a situation. You have a man that has everything. A rich man 
Now, it doesn't, the Bible doesn't say that he inherited, he must have worked for it. You know, people that work constantly, you know, build things. I mean, we find in Luke chapter 12, there's a man who builds a barn and stores all his things. And he works so hard and says, I'll, 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 build, I'll build a bigger barn and I can save more stuff. Well, there's nothing wrong with saving. It's what you do with it. Okay? But it doesn't save your soul. And what we have here is he says, what is the profit of man? To get everything he wants. Okay. What is it going to fill your emotions with? What, what's your emotions that I have to have, I want? I think, in, uh, uh, let's look at uh, James chapter 4. And we, we go back to that because we're going to look at the struggles of why we do the things that we do. Okay, you can't buy the the uh, uh, salvation. You can't buy you can't buy any of it. And people determine their whole lives on what they have. Okay, or what they or what they want to get. I can find it myself here. Okay. Read uh, verses one through four. Uh, four. Chapter four. For the book of James. Oh my gosh, this new Bible is going crazy. Yeah, you can read it, Sister Stripes. Oh, what did you say? Green. Chapter 4, verses 1 through 4. What causes fights and quarrels among you? Don't they come from your desires that bow within you? You want something but don't get it? You kill of it, but you cannot have what you want? You quarrel and fight? Do you not have, uh, you do not have because you do not ask God. When you ask, you do not receive, you do not receive because you ask the wrong motive. That you may spend what you get on your pleasures. Your adult. So, 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 when we don't have, what does it do to us? Make us want. But what does it do in the inside of us? Jealousy. Oh, sure. Okay, you guys are gonna start going there, there, there. It changes. Think of your when I when I say this, think about what it does to you, not when I'm asking for an answer. Okay? Yeah. When you don't have money, what does it do to you? Hurts. Hurts? Okay, why is it hurt? Yeah. Okay, because usually because I see this guy have and I don't. This is what the scripture is talking about. Okay? I remember as a young Christian, I didn't care so much about what things of the world. But I saw other Christians handling things a lot better than I would handle it. And that made me upset. It made me jealous. I would watch, you know, Pastor Eddie, he's a pastor now, but Ed, how he handled it, he would talk to things and brought peace to people. Like, man, why can't I do that? What do I want to do? I want to stir up trouble. I want to make somebody mad because of the way I'm feeling. Right? The way I'm feeling, I'm not feeling happy with it myself, so I'm going to take it on everybody else. Okay? Or I'll just go sit in the corner by myself and just put my, my lay my jaw and hit the floor. All right? Because the things that you may have, it may be financial, it could be spiritual, it could be all these things. That's why the Lord says, what does it profit a man to gain the whole world? But in the end, what do you, uh, you lose your soul. And what we find here is we find a rich man who has everything. Yeah, a rich man has everything. Now here's some of the issues that we look at. Is that what, what do wars and fights come from? Now guys, look at them. Now this is the word of God. And, 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 uh, and oftentimes, it's, this goes back, this is a family problem. This is a family problem. What, what are you guys asking me a question? What family? What family? Okay, there you go. Good. See, that's it. Well, let's go all the way back to Genesis chapter 4. This is a family problem. Okay? How many know in a family do we love each other to hate each other? Okay, we've got sisters and brothers, and we're cool. As long as we don't live together, we're all right. 
<laughs> Come on. I love my sisters and brothers. They, they, my sister, my older sister. Mijo, I love you. I miss you. Hey, it's big sis. I love you. miss you too. But we can't stay in the same room. I mean, we can get a conversation. We can talk. And all I have to do is want to say one little thing and we can disagree. What causes those problems? Just are thinking different views. Different views. Okay. Like, uh, Let's say, for instance, you know, in my family, you know, most of us go to church. All they all, I was the outsider, and then all of a sudden, I came inside, and everybody went outside. <laughs> okay, I guess I took it to the next level, took it to be a pastor, and all the rest of them. Now, some of them don't even want to talk to me. Okay, and so, what causes that problem? Well, this is a family problem. Okay, let's read this in chapter four. It says, now, Adam knew, uh, knew Eve, his wife, and so they conceived, uh, they, she conceived and bore Cain, and said, I required a man from, from the Lord. Then she bore again, and this time, uh, time his brother Abel. So now you have an older brother and a little brother. Now, if you understand the, 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 the heritage about what God does, and according to the word of God, that the older brother always gets the, uh, the bigger blessings. Okay, he's supposed to be the responsible one. He always has, you know, and, and this is the problem with our lives today is that we despise leadership. We don't like certain type of leaders. Okay, you know, I, I'm going to use Isaiah and Jeremy. Okay, Germany. No, I can't talk to Isaiah, so I'll go to Jeremy. Okay, and if you don't, and, until Jeremy disagrees with you, then you go back to Isaiah. Okay, and then you disagree with him, and you try to find somebody else to agree with. Let me go, Mr. Duncan. Right. You've been here for a little while, so I'll go to you and ask you. Uh oh, he, he doesn't have me. So we go around until we find somebody that agrees with us. Where do these problems come from? They come from really. They come from within. Okay, and this is what the scriptures are breaking down to. It says here that Abel was the younger brother. Of Cain. Okay. Now listen to what he says. But it, it says, in the process of time, and it comes to pass that Cain brought an offering. He says, offering the fruit of the ground to the Lord. And Abel also brought the first, he says, the firstborn of his flock and, and their fat. And, and the Lord respect Abel, his offering, and he did not respect Cain's. Okay. So, so what we find here is what causes fights and arguments among you? These are some of the battles are within. Okay? Jesus said, What did the prophet man gain the whole world but to lose his soul? Or what man can do in exchange for that? What can you exchange? There's nothing that you can, there's not a dime in the world that's going to get you out of going to hell. Okay? The Catholics teach that if you give a certain amount of money, all right, you can buy your way in. Uh, the, the teaching back in the early uh, 1400s of the Catholic Church was that they were money hungry, and so they would tell the poor people, hey, your husband, like this widow, widow came and said, hey, my husband's dead. Yeah, you want your husband, and he's in, you know, the, the priest would say, well, your, hu your husband's in purgatory, and purgatory will come down the line, okay? So in order for him to get out of there, you must pay a certain amount of money. So she would go work and work and and back in those days, that in the 1400s, there's not much of a person can do because her husband did all the work, and they took their lands and everything. All she was left to do was to wash clothes or sell her body. And whatever amounts of money she would make, it would go to the church. And that was to get her husband out of purgatory. Okay? So you can't exchange money for your soul. So this goes all the way back. What we see here is happening between the rich man and Lazarus. Two Jewish men. Two Jewish men. Okay? And according to God's eyes, that these men were part of the inheritance of the kingdom of God. You follow me so far? And so here the little brother comes and brings a better offering than the bigger brother. The older brother should know better. 
Okay? The older should know better why. More responsible. Accountability. Accountability. Experience. 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 Maturity. Maturity. Wisdom. Wisdom. How you handle things. Okay? But what was Cain's description of his life? Let's, let's read it. Okay? Abel worshiped God. Believe it or not, this is all about worship. I mean, we think it's about he is angry with his brother. No, this is about worshiping God. Okay? Here comes uh, Cain understood about worshiping God. Okay? And he knew the fact that he had to bring a good offering, and that offering had to come from his heart so he can please the Lord. And if he was going to please God, God was going to be well with him, and he would be blessed, and he would accept the inheritance, and God would continue to bless his family and do more. But, but Cain had some issues in his life. Okay? And so this is what he says. When the Lord respected Abel and his offering, and he did not respect Cain. He said, Cain was very angry. Listen to what happens. He's going to describe his, his description. All right? Let's just put yourself in there, your description about how you feel right now. Okay? So what are we talking about? We're talking about going to hell. Okay? I don't want to go to hell. You want to go to hell? Hmm? We should put up uh, how our life is right now. Okay? So this is what it says. So uh, Cain was very what? Angry? And what does it say? And his countenance fell. She, yeah. You look angry. Right? Come on, you guys. Pastor's mad right now. That's just the way it looks. <laughs> okay. Yeah. All right? Is it cold in here or what? Bad attitude. Bad attitude. Yes. Do um, you think that maybe uh, what they did for a living made a, something uh, like, uh, well, that's all we had to give to the Lord? Like Cain had, he was the tiller of the land. He had uh, uh, potatoes. He had food that was grown in the ground. And that was what he did. Um, Cain, um, I mean, Abel had the sheep. Flock. He tended the flock. And do you think that maybe because it was... One had a better job than the other? Uh, that, or maybe um, that's all they had. That's all they knew. It, if Cain was to, was to get something that was alive and more pleasing to God, then he would have to ask for it from someone. Like See, here, here's the problem with that, okay? That during a season of harvest, God expects something from the harvest. You have to make a blood offering, and that's what they relied on each other on. Okay, this is about family, okay? But once, once it's not about a matter of he, uh, Abel was able to give more because he had more. Cain had just as much but wasn't willing to give much. There's not a maybe in this because if you understand the laws of harvesting and according to the word of God and the way they were taught, okay, it's basically he came with a big offering, he put it down and took it back. <laughs> I mean, you you can understand that. Yeah, it's not a, it's it's not okay. Your tithe doesn't depend on if you made two hundred dollars. What does he have to give it? So if this guy made a thousand dollars, he had to put a hundred. So you're gonna tell me because he gave a hundred, God's not gonna bless you as much? Right. It's not a matter of the amount. If it's a matter of the heart. You gave your tithe of 20. He gave his tithe of 100. And God will bless those with open hearts. Where ended up, you can end up making 2,000. Okay? And to a, what, what one person gives, it's not as much as how much he gives. It's a matter of the heart. What, it, what Cain did is that when he put in, he took back. Okay? And so if you understand what that means, and that during the harvest time is that God expected 
the harvesters, <laughs> those who harvest, planted, and sowed, and reaped, to give that tenth to God. So it wasn't a matter of blood, blood offering, right? No, not at this time. Okay? And so what you have is that when the Lord came, okay, let's look at verse 6. And this Lord, because this, he's describing the characteristics. This is what we're looking at. It's not a matter of, look, at this, this is what God says, okay? God tells Samuel, um, you think, I'm going to paraphrase this, okay? You think I sit back and desire to sacrifice and offerings to make me happy? No, I desire hearts of willingness. Okay, that's what God wants. Sacrifice and offerings I do not want. He says, I do not desire. God has, see, that tells us God's heart. God has a desire. And what God desires is you. Okay? What causes you to be mad and angry and do the things that you do? Okay? What does James say? Those, those evilness that comes within. Well, that's why this becomes a family problem. Okay? Uh, the rich man and Lazarus are brothers. It's a family problem. When you guys get into your emotional struggles, and it becomes a family problem. It's not, it's not you know, you're part of this family. Okay? You're a part. You, all of you are brothers. And you all become a part of the family of God. Okay? Now, the scriptures tell us, amen, that if we confess Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior... And invite him into our hearts, and we become his children. And in the, in the fact that we become his children, then we become brothers. Okay? But in that fact of brothers, there becomes, you know, you have your older brothers and your younger brothers. This is a hard, hard thing for, for older people because you're older in the Lord, and you're older in age, but younger in the spiritual sense because you don't understand God yet. You're immature. You have to catch up to your maturity in your spiritual walk. If you're 50, 60 years old and you're still arguing over a piece of bread, then that's, that's a problem. An older man knows how to maintain himself and say, no, I'm here, you take that. It's how you handle those issues and those problems. Okay? If you're disobedient, well, then all that's left is what? Standing before God. So this, let's look at the characteristics. So the Lord said to this to Cain, Why are you angry? Why has your consonant fell? If you do well, this is what he says, If you do well, will not you be accepted? If you do right, if you do what's right before God, will you not be accepted? Okay? Do right before God. And what is the right thing to do before God? What do you think the right thing is to do? Say so. What do you think the right thing is to do? Is to do what's right before God. Is to not just about. It's not about the money. It's about it's doing what's right. But who did he take it out on? Uh, oh, let's look at that. Okay. Why are you angry? Why is your conscience bad? If you do well, will not the Lord accept you? And if you do not do well, this is what he says: Sin lies at your door. That has not changed. That has not changed. You mess up, sin is at the door, and it wants you. Okay? This is what it says. Listen to what it says. He says, and if you do not do it uh, well, sin lies at your door, and it desires that it, <coughs> it desires it for you. And but you should not, you should rule over it. Okay? He's, he's telling, this is the father telling his son. God is saying this. God himself is saying this. And here's the problem. When you have read your Bibles, you guys don't believe this. Okay? This is a family problem now. This is a situation of life. This is, here, I'm warning you, brother, don't do this and don't do that. And, and you're not willing to accept it. Because if you're willing to accept it, this advice that comes from God. Now the Bible teaches us that why we have spiritual leaders. Why are we here as spiritual leaders to draw all that stuff out of your life? To keep you away from this place that is called hell. 
Okay? We're, no, we're going to learn about what it means. How many know what forever means? Imagine this. Okay, now look at it. Here's Cain's problem. He says, if you deal with your anger and your jealousy, okay, why are people jealous? Come on. You wanted to say something. You raise your hand. What? Well, I don't know about jealousy. Uh, no, I don't <laughs> Come know. on. You know everything about jealousy. You everything in this scri description here has to do with all of you. Well, let me tell you, you're, you're, well, you're up in it, brother. you got it all over your face. No, I, I know. I know. I know. I my mind about certain things. I don't let it go deep inside. you got people going like this. <laughs> he's jealous. He's jealous. He's jealous. Like with me, I, uh, okay, I had, I had a lot of things. I had a lot of, I had a family, business. You know, I worked hard all my life, and I had a lot of things, and I lost them. Then I gained them all back again, and I lost them. Then I gained, and I lost them all again. I, mean, I gained it all back, and I lost it again. again. Now, I'm, I, I like rolling dice. Nice. <laughs> and I, you know, that's one thing I'm not as lazy. You know, I don't lolly the gag around, and I, no. I uh, put it to it, but... I see, you know, people driving around nice trucks. They're uh, construction companies. And I see that, and I think, man, I had it in my hand. What the heck did I do? And it, it feels like a, not a... Resentment. Resentment, and it kind of just, it's like, it tears my heart like this. That's not so much jealousy. It's more resentful and... Why me? Why me? Exactly. <laughs> I get a hammer and just, yeah. Yeah, but you know, here, here, here. Let me, uh, you know, as as we can labor all your life, and and we look for that commend of people saying, "Oh, he's a hard worker. He's this. He's that. He's that." Okay. I mean, I've often, in in, in my experience of doing this, people don't consider this a job. Okay, even though I pay taxes just like everybody else does. But you have to. I work hard at work. I study it. It's, it's a job. It's work hard. Okay. And and I think anything that you're able to do in life, you make the best of until God continues. And now you're seeing it. And if you don't let, he say, well, God say, well, well, maybe that's been my issue. You've been resentful. Okay. Because you can say, well, I need. I just want to get ahead. And you're. We try to force the hand of God. Let's. Let me tell you one thing that we all know well. Okay? We all know well. And this is something that when I was away, I was I had a lot of time to think. And I think that's what God does to me, is that I had time to think about things, pray about things, really get a hold of God. Okay? And I started thinking, like, you know, we're so fixated on the things that we don't have and not appreciate the things that we have. Okay. And the S 